in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, in the waters of baptism, our brother Mike and our sister Elba died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May they now share with him eternal glory. In baptism, our brother Mike and our sister Elpa received the signs of the cross. May they now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servants, Mike and Elba, who have gone to the rest in Christ may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So I'm going to invite uh, Noel to help us with the first reading, please. Thank you. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. And speak to God. I would like to invite Julie to help us with a second reading. Thank you.
This is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this, which is corruptible, clothes itself with immortality, and this, which is mortal, clothes, clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they'll, they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and other every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My friends, first of all, let me introduce myself for those who don't know me. I'm pretty new to Divine Xavier. 11 months here since I came last year after Father Roman retired in July. So Father Patrick and myself came and started to serve the people of God here at Divine Xavier, right? Uh, so I don't really know you. Uh, I just know Elaine and 
Karen, who is helping us with live streaming, but I don't I believe I never met you. Um, it is my honor to celebrate the life of Mike and Elba. I wish I met them. I read something about them, and it's beautiful. I can see love here this evening. Seeing that picture right here, just bright. It's just love everywhere. I can feel that they are present among us because of you. You bring in their memory alive. So on behalf of the parish community and the staff of Divine Savior, I would like to extend our condolences and sympathy to the members of the Tompkins family. I believe that I memorized uh, the four siblings, Joe, Eric, which I met before. He was here. I was telling him how beautiful his mom is, because she was a beautiful woman. Met Yvonne and Michelle, who is the baby in the family. I, that's the only names that I memorize. I, pardon me if I don't mention you. I believe there are more family sitting in the pews, extended family, friends, you know, um, sisters of um, Elba, which I met in the vestibule area because I was trying to understand where um, Elba was born, uh, which I forgot now. Shame on me. I know that she's from Puerto Rico. She is not from, from Ponce. What is she, what is she from again? Uh, where she was born again? Uh, Cam Guayama. Guayama, which is kind of close to Ponce. Because I was in Florida for three years, and I met a lot of Puerto Ricans over there, a lot of Boricuas. And they always distinguish Puerto Rico and Ponce. If you're from Puerto Rico, you know what I'm talking about. And, um, yeah, it's beautiful what I've read. And eventually when um, Yvonne will share with us the words of remembrance about Mike and Elba. But I read something little and it touched my heart. It's just love. And then Elaine was preparing uh, the liturgy for tonight's Mass and talk about the, the psalm called in Mi Viejo San Juan, which is a beautiful psalm. And uh, it, it really, uh, when I was listening to the psalm, it, my eyes were with tears because I'm from Mexico. I moved from um, Mexico about 11 years ago. And I know the feeling when you are away from your land, from your people, and you wish you were there. But somehow you're here in another country with another culture, a different language. So I can feel what um, Elba perhaps experienced, right? Because I read that she loved to be Puerto Rican. I don't really understand much about that. Maybe if I talk about myself, I love to be Mexican, meaning that I love my, my culture, the Mexican culture. I like the food, I like my language. Perhaps that's what you meant by Elba loved being Puerto Rican, and I know Latinos, it's like just one family. I mean, it doesn't matter if you are from the South, from the North, you Latino, you are like family. That's what they always Latino, or the Hispanic show me when I am hanging out with them, right? And, um, well, um, I'm talking about because I am filled with emotions right now, because <laughs> my heart is touched by by you and the way you, you show me how much you love you and how much you support, right? So my friends, in today's gospel, which is from uh, Matthew, is chapter five, and Jesus is giving us this beautiful teaching, which is called the Sermon of the Mountains. And he introduced his teaching by giving us the Beatitudes. And according to the evangelist Matthew, Matthew is the guy who put together the gospel, who wrote it. He's the author. He's given us eight ways to be happy. Right? To be happy. That's what we really need. Nowadays, however, if you follow each beatitude, 
you will get the second one and maybe you will say mm, this the attitude doesn't make any sense how I can be happy when I cry for someone who is no longer with me in this world that's what he says blessed are they who mourn for they will be comforted so happy are you if you mourn because you will be comforted if you put that the attitude together it doesn't really resonate the way we understand uh, how we can be happy right how a person who is crying can be happy right i don't you scratching your hand you had like me but jesus is giving us this teaching for something right he's coming from god himself he knows about suffering because he himself was a human being like us. He understood the way we humans suffer, especially when somebody passed away, right? He experienced the death of his own uh, father in this world, St. Joseph. He was a teenager when, when St. Joseph passed away. Then in the Gospels, St. John, when his very good friend Lazarus died, he cried, right? So he understands sufferings. And he wants us to understand that even though when we are mourning, if we really believe that he is with us, giving us comfort, we are going to find peace knowing that God knows what I'm going through right now. That's that's why he's teaching us this beatitude. Like even in suffering, right, we can find happiness. Why? Because if we believe in his teachings, his teachings will help me to grow in my faith and embrace my divine Savior who, right, he is with me in a horrible or in a, in a difficult time. Right, and then it's moving, right? It's moving, and then it's talking about the children of God. Who are the children of God? Is this is the seven ones? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. What is a peacemaker? Whom in this room, in this church, is a peacemaker? So he can or she can be a peace, uh, children of God. My friends, we believe that through the sacrament of baptism, we became the children of God. So we have a vocation. Our vocation is be a peacemaker. So people can understand that we are the children of God and is here in our hearts. And then, once again, when I was reading about uh, Mike and Elba, you know that they were peacemakers. They were bringing happiness to your life, right? feeling the love coming from them. That's what Jesus is talking in today's gospel. Being a peacemaker is, without saying much, showing that love that God, because God is love, is in your heart. And that's what people need right now out there. So, my friends, don't forget that our vocation as children of God is to be a peacemaker. Just follow the example of our brother Mike and our sister Elba. Now they are enjoying, finally, to united, right? Because it was our sister Elba who passed away first, and then Mike. Now they are in heaven. That's what Jesus is saying. Blessed are you uh, because you re uh, rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. So Jesus is promised us that we, the children of God, will dwell one day in eternity. And we call it the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of heart. And everybody is invited to dwell in that beautiful kingdom. 
and knowing that Mike and Elba now are reunited in heaven, they're like this close, like this close with God. In front heaven, they are watching you over. So, when you pray tonight, as your dad, as your mom, your friend, your sister, your brother-in-law, to pray for you before God, because now they are in heaven with God. In front up there, it's possible that they are with us right now in this very place, in our hearts, in our memories. So pray to God and ask Mike and Elba to pray for you, to protect you, right? to comfort you, that now that you're missing them very much. So there are many things I would like to say, but we don't have much time. And let us continue with our celebration. For sure, my friends, um, Mike and Elba will be greatly missed. You already missed them. Because when somebody leaves this world, we know that they are now coming back. But their memories, their love, still is alive in our hearts. That's what brings us comfort and consolation. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, finally, make Mike and Elba Rest in peace. Amen. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Eric. I believe he's going to help us with the praise of the faithful. Could you please join me up here? Please rise. My dear friends, let us join together to pray not only for our loved ones, Mike and Elba, but also for the intentions of all those gathered here. Our response to the following prayers will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Mike and Elba, who in baptism were given the pledge of eternal life. May they now share the banquet table of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear prayer. For the people of Puerto Rico, that they find safety and prosperity, we pray. For those suffering from dementia and the families and friends who suffer along with them, that they find peace and comfort, we pray. Okay. For doctors, nurses, and caregivers, that they are blessed for helping scared, sick, injured, or aging people with kindness, compassion, competence, and love, we pray. For those with mental health issues, that they find the help they need to become their best selves, we pray. For therapists, that they utilize compassion, patience, wisdom, and humor in order to help their patients, we pray. For all teachers, that they are not discouraged and continue to help educate others, we pray. Lord, hear pray. For many friends and members of our families that have gone to everlasting life before us, grant them eternal peace and joy. We pray. For the family, friends, colleagues, and students, and patients of Elva and Mike, that they remember the good times and think of them with a smile, we pray. That Mike and Elba will rejoice together for all eternity, sending love to their beloved children, Joe, Eric, Yvonne, and Michelle, and grandchildren Noel, Ian Diego, and Eric, and all their extended family and friends, until all of us are together once again in heaven. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
God, our Creator, you entrusted Mike and Elba to our care, and now you embrace them in your love. Comfort us who seek to know your compassion, your forgiveness, and your saving grace. Comfort us in our sorrow and bring us hope. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Is right. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O oh Lord, for the salvation of your servants, Mike and Elba, we beseech your mercy that they who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior might find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord, for He is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one choir of exalting praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founts of all holiness. We call you therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, to out the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jaime, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember your servants, Mike and Elba, whom you call from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My dear friends, at uh, the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now let us offer each other the signs of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. And so, my friends, um, now we have communion. And for those who profess our Catholic faith, we truly believe that Jesus is truly present in the bread and in the wine. So for those who are ready to receive communion today, please make a line in the hallway. And then when I say the body of Christ, unfold your hands right like this and say amen. For those people who don't feel ready to receive communion, you also can join people in the line. Just do something like this. And I know that you are asking me for a blessing. Party of Christ. 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 Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Party of Christ. This is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Party of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Y que el Señor la bendiga en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Let your Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Let's be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. Lord God, the Son left us in the sacrament of his body and food. Food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, 
our brother Mike and our sister Elba may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to invite our sister Yvonne who is going to give us the words of remembrance. Please come up here. Elba Mercedes Sandin Oñate Tompkins left us on December 14, 2020. But even years later, we could still hear the sound of her laughter. Upon hearing the news of her passing, a dear family friend, while offering Dad condolences, reaffirmed to him what Dad already had known for years, that Elba had lived a long 83 years of life, and that most of those years were happy ones. She was a woman who lived several vivid chapters in her long but still too short lifetime. She was the first child born to Ramon and Elba Sandin in Santurce, Puerto Rico on October 29, 1937. She had three siblings, Ray, and sisters Lisbeth and Frances. As her dad was a colonel in the US Army, the family had to relocate multiple times as a result of changes in her dad's assignments. The family enjoyed going on road trips together. To name just a few, they visited Tokyo and Lake Biwa in Japan, Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico, and a long car trip with all four kids from Fort Huachuca to Guadalajara and Mexico City. Elba was an exceptional student who skipped a few grades due to her intelligence and hard work, which resulted in her graduating from high school two years ahead of her peers. After having earned, her a, master, after having earned her a master's degree in zoology at University of Arizona, Elba met Captain Joseph James Oñate at the Officers Club in Fort Huachuca. They were married within a year and soon were transferred to Iceland where they would welcome sons Joe and Eric. Later, the family moved to Tampa, Florida where daughter Yvonne was born. Tragically, her then husband Joe was killed in an F-4 fighter plane training mission, making her a young widow at 27 years old with three young children. After spending some time mourning, Alba decided she wasn't gonna be alone forever <laughs> and wanted to find a great man who not only loved her, but also loved her children. She went blonde, hit the officers club in Puerto Rico and met, fell in love with, and eventually married Mike Tompkins. She spent 14 years working as a beloved teacher at St. Mel's Catholic School, where she also served as Eucharistic minister. Her faith was important to her as she was sharing her love and knowledge of Catholicism for many years. She spent years teaching catechism to young adult teens in preparation to receive their sacrament of holy confirmation. Elba was loved by her students for many reasons. Her students particularly enjoyed her Spanish accent. As one example, when preparing to take exams, they would wait for her to tell them to go out and get their cover sheets, and they were delighted at her pronunciation and hoped that she would say the word sheet incorrectly. <laughs> Whenever she ran into her former students out in the world, while running errands or the like, sometimes many years after they were in her classroom, she would only remember their names, but she could also recount a story about them as well as their homework ha habits to their delight. <laughs> Elba was loved by many, but truly known by few. 
She always had an air of mystery about her. We couldn't often tell what she was thinking, but when she was happy, the whole world knew she was happy. Elba was never one to hold a grudge. She would never, she would always forgive anyone she loved for any transgression without weaponizing their shortcomings. She could read a book a day. She loved shopping and had eclectic that some might call flamboyant taste. Her hobby was collecting treasures. She really knew her inventory. If anything was missing, or was given away without her consent, boy, would we hear about it. The whole world would hear about it. <laughs> she loved bold colors, and her wardrobe and jewelry were tastefully over the top. And nobody did skin care like Elba. Nobody did Christmas like Elba. Multiple trees and nativities occupied almost every room in the house. She loved cooking Puerto Rican food for her family. She enjoyed watching baseball with dad and loved watching movies. While she and dad had similar tastes in movies and shows, she enjoyed a good crime thriller and could never get enough of the TV shows The Golden Girls, Downton Abbey, or Everyone Loves Raymond. She is remembered for her wit, intelligence, forgiving nature, everlasting beauty and wonderful life. Almost 18 months to the day, she was joined by her husband of 50 plus years. From our point of view, there has never been a better, more brilliant, funnier, nor more quotable man to walk the planet than Dr. Lynn Michael Tompkins. His accomplishments were many. He was a naval officer, city manager, school bus driver, government worker, management consultant, teacher, author, and a PhD, PhD level psychologist, but that's just what he did professionally. Personally, he was an even greater success story. He was a loving husband, father, and friend. He was a good citizen and a good neighbor. He left the world better than he found it. He, like Elba, had a great, mostly life, mostly happy life, and it was never boring. He loved growing up in Walnut Creek, California with his parents Chuck and Peggy Tompkins and little sister Pam. He placed special value on his friendships. He delighted in going on road trips with his besties, otherwise known as the Fat Boys. As irreverent as he was, he was not cynical in any capacity. He, said, he found some joy every single day. He appreciated the little things, like an ice cold Coca-Cola or orange juice, a winning game from the San Francisco Giants, any sort of vehicle, witty conversation, a clever joke, especially inappropriate ones, fancy cheese, watching the TV show Star Trek The Next Generation, writing to-do lists, a pleasant nap under a warm blanket, corn on the cob, watching the antics of my sister Michelle's cats, Stoli and Borracho. The writings of Peter Egan and Jordan Peterson, Hershey's milk chocolate candy bars, a spectacular view, films from the golden age, and also the films The Electric Horseman, Giant, Doc Hollywood, Spartacus, and Notting Hill. Music from most genres, and frequenting his favorite watering hole, Garcia's. But, what he loved most was spending time with family, friends, and patients. Our dad loved his time as, as a psychologist. He found his work here to be some of the most fulfilling and joyful of his long career. He constantly spoke about how intelligent, insightful, and interesting his clients were. 
He told his patients to call him any time, and many of them did. He loved that. He beamed at the thought of being able to help people at his age. He would want his family, friends, and patients to lead happy, fulfilling lives and to not be afraid of taking calculated risks. He would encourage everyone to seek out joy, to avoid negative people or suffering fools any more than absolutely necessary, to surround yourself with positive people, to make and keep old friends, to limit your intake of negative news, to take one problem at a time, to be accountable for your actions, to avoid negative self-talk, to eschew the word potential, to laugh often, to improve yourself a bit every day, and to not fear failure. From our spiritual point of view, mom and dad are in heaven, surrounded by loved ones, and having a grand old time. While we are sure that they are in a good place, this place will never be as bright nor as interesting without them. My dear friends, trusting in God, we have prayed together for our brother Mike and our sister Elba. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Mike and Elba again and enjoy their friendship. Although this congregation will despair in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in faith of Jesus Christ. opened the gates of paradise to your servants, Mike and Elba, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother Mike and sister Elba forever. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise. My dear friends, bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the praise of the humble. Hear you people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May Mike and Elba, souls, and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, go in peace, this mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
cheerful. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna, uh, my brother just shot, so I'm... <laughs> Neighbors 50 years ago. Yeah, 50 years ago. That's a long time. It is a long time. <laughs> I thought we were probably the last one still on the street around. Oh, perfect. Jones is still there. Yes, so, Jeremy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Are you coming tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. Oh, we have a great Oh, my goodness. Are you still teaching? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you very much.